really can't say for sure how many people have died here, but tens of thousands of people at least. Oh my God. Oh my God. You all right, man? Yeah, well, I'm just, I'm, I just, I'm feeling it. You know, it's yeah. tense up here. I'm, I'm feeling tense. It's just, I can feel it. It's just so much heartache up here, man. Like, I'm literally, I can, I'm, I'm literally crying right now. This is one of the most haunted locations I have ever been to. Stand right where that happened. But you came up to me. Okay, head on out. Oh, God. Oh, God. Dude, something just moved my glass into my head. Dave just got scratched. Are you okay, man? Oh my god. You heard that, didn't you? You gotta push him people around. Oppressing people. Push me. Push me down these steps. Death is inevitable for every single one of us. For some, it will come suddenly, and for others, we will fade slowly over time. But almost all of us will meet that end in a building just like this. For so many people, St. Joseph's Hospital in Lorain, Ohio was the end of the line. And now, this sprawling 100,000 square foot hospital sits abandoned along Lake Erie. Greg, how long was this hospital in operation? Do you know? Uh, the original building uh, was constructed in 1916. Uh, the, the more modern building was built in 1950. And then it officially closed the doors in 1997. No matter what hospital you go to, generally there's a lot of death in a hospital specifically because it's where people go to die and others. Oh, yeah. There's different parts of the hospital that have a little bit more death than the others. Things that people think of that come to mind, the ICU, the CCU. Uh, but what part that you know of, what part has the most death? Uh, the fourth floor, uh, geriatrics unit. Uh, more deaths occurred there than any other area inside the hospital. Throughout the, throughout the years that uh, St. Joseph's has been open, have you heard how many people have actually died here? I mean, I really can't say for sure how many people have died here, but considering that the original structure was built over 100 years ago and they, of course, built on after that, you're talking, you know, tens of thousands of people at least. Tens of thousands. If Mike's estimate is accurate, that means that St. Joseph's Hospital is not only the most massive building we've investigated, but that it's also seen more death than any other location we've researched. Now, do you notice any particular correlation between the number of people that died in each location or the areas that had more death and the activity? Uh, <laughs> there is no correlation because for me, the most active area in the whole hospital is the cafeteria and kitchen. Oh, wow. And you think about it, there, nobody's dying there. Uh, but even when the hospital was open, I've talked with uh, former employees who would see apparitions back in the kitchen. Uh, and right now we've had a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, I've been physically shoved out of a room uh, where uh, I entered this room and it felt like a hand was on my face, shoved me out, my glasses went flying. And that was right after I was searching the area because 
we had so much stuff being thrown around in the kitchen. I mean, I thought somebody else was in there with us. Uh, it was just like small stones or whatever they could get their hands on were being thrown around. And it, it was like every five minutes something was being thrown. So I'm searching the whole area to see if I can find anybody. And there was no, no nobody to be found. So uh, which area would be your favorite? You know, really the psych ward labor de delivery on uh, floor number three over there in the, the patient ward is uh, really interesting to me, especially the psych ward. Uh, the CCU area over uh, in conjunction with the ICU, that's also another hot spot for me. And really, I mean, one of my favorite interactions here was just walking down one of the halls and I was on the way to the ER and just heard footsteps behind me turn around to look and just got blasted with a huge wave of energy like something went right through me. After learning just how many people died inside the old St. Joseph's Hospital, it's no surprise to hear how intense the paranormal activity and energy can be. There could be another factor stirring up these entities. There are parts of this hospital where demolition has already begun. Do you feel that some of the, uh, the demolition uh, that's been going on in uh, some parts of the, of the hospital back when they were wanting to actually, you know, start tearing it down, do you feel that that's actually helped or hurt the paranormal activity here? Well, I think for, as far as paranormal activity, I think that would rile up some spirits. They may be upset that a, a building that they were attached to is now destroyed. Um, from a historical perspective, of course, I'm saddened by something like that. I completely understand that, you know, at some point in time when a building is neglected, it may come time to tear it down. But um, like I said, we do a lot to try to help historic locations. So I'm always saddened when something like that has to happen. But certainly, you know, like the suggestion of spirits coming over into the newer hospital, they may be upset that they've had to do that. Now throughout the hospital, generally what type of activity occurs what is the most common type of activity that's reported? Uh, well, you know what, I'll just tell you. <laughs> uh, it's not one, it's not one type of activity. It's a combination of everything. Everything from slamming doors, uh, footsteps, uh, lights, mysterious lights seen, apparitions, full-bodied apparitions being seen, shadows uh, being touched, uh, I've been Besides uh, my head getting pushed out of that room, I've been slapped a couple times. Uh, I was walking and it felt like a little boy was holding my hand, grabbed my hand. So there's a lot of physical contact in the hospital too. In your personal opinion, through everything that you've experienced, through everything that's happened, would you consider St. Joseph's Hospital to be haunted? Oh, definitely. I, I've been on a lot of investigations. I've been investigating since 1991. I've been all over the United States. I've been to Scotland investigating the Edinburgh vaults and old castles. And this is one of the most haunted locations I have ever been to. This hospital is massive. Every single area of this building is saturated in death. It's hard to know where to begin. With the sun setting and the full moon on the rise, it's time for us to tackle this investigation. We'll start, just as we always do, with our abandonment technique. With so much space to cover, we have to use our knowledge of the claims of activity and a little gut instinct to decide where we are going to place the cameras and equipment throughout the hospital. Our focus areas will all have a night vision camera and a digital recorder. Those areas are the first floor family practice hallway, the kitchen and cafeteria, the ICU, and the fourth floor geriatric unit. We will also have digital audio recorders set up on the second and third floors. Our routive diode will also be set up on the second floor, but on the opposite end. This device only records in certain frequencies and cuts out all background noise and ambient sounds. Any voices and sounds captured can be assumed unexplained. After leaving this sprawling hospital empty for almost two hours, we find a great deal of unexplained activity was captured on the cameras and recorders. Starting on the first floor, not long after we left, the camera picked up an unexplained light anomaly. It manifests in the doorway and moves upward and toward the camera. It's hard to tell if these anomalies are actually spirit energy without anything to corroborate it. Shortly after, 
The audio on the camera picks up what sounds to be unexplained pounding on one of the doors right beside or behind the camera. Then the microphone picks up a similar sound further down the hall, followed immediately by the sound of something heavy being dragged across the floor. A while later, the audible sound of footsteps can be heard running down the hallway within earshot of the camera. The last piece of unexplained phenomena on this first floor is probably the most chilling. Echoing down the halls, you can hear the faint disembodied voice of a little girl. Could this be one of the tens of thousands of lost souls who roam this old hospital? Next, let's move to the ICU. This area of the hospital was surprisingly quiet for most of the two hours of abandonment, but the digital recorder picked up the eerie disembodied voice of a man. Following the voice, the digital recorder also captured two separate instances of knocking sounds and movement. According to Greg, the fourth floor geriatric ward saw more death than any other area in the hospital. Uh, the fourth floor uh, geriatrics unit, uh, more deaths occurred there than any other area inside the hospital. The microphone on this camera did pick up a couple unexplained occurrences, one of which had us puzzled. It sounds as if something very forcibly taps directly on the microphone. There were also moments where distinct movement was audible to the camera. The final camera angle is from the cafeteria and kitchen, which was reported to be one of the most active parts of the hospital. Sadly, this camera didn't pick up any unexplained activity at all in almost two hours worth of footage. But we still have the individual audio recorders from the second and third floors to review. On the second floor, the digital audio recorder had something tap on its plastic shell. It seems like the entities of St. Joseph's Hospital are very curious of the equipment we use. The next segment of audio is probably the creepiest we've presented from this abandonment session. In a quiet and empty hospital, it sounds like two people speaking to each other. This seems to be more electronic and can be classified as an electronic voice phenomenon or EVP. It's exciting to hear the spirits of this hospital speaking so early on in the investigation. The third floor was ripe with poltergeist activity. As a door very close to this digital audio recorder opens and shuts again all on its own. It's one thing for a spirit to have energy to speak or to knock, but when objects are physically moving, it can be exhilarating. 
though nothing could prepare us for when we went to collect the route of diode to end abandonment. We were picking up abandonment stuff, and we walked up here, and the route of is literally thrown off of where Jason had it set up. Now it was sitting right there. Yes, it was sitting, it was like this actually, guys. The recorder yeah. moved because yeah. I had the recorder right here. The router was like right here. I it wasn't you. on this. It moved it over and had pulled it over here. It had to because, <laughs> yeah. did you hear that? What was that? Whoa, you hear that water? That might be water because that carpet's wet right okay. there. It could be. But the route of man, that is. So it was. Yeah. You had I, you, you had it sitting had just it. like this. Basically, whenever I set it up, I set it. I wanted this to be. I always try to keep this as far away from the recorder as possible. Cut down on interference. I had it like that, and then we walk in. It was on the ground. Yeah. And it and, and you saw where it was. I mean, you in the video, it's laying down here. Yeah. And we just walked up here. We were on the other side, grabbing other stuff for abandonment. We all hadn't even been over here. Yeah, all the way in the other side of that building. And somehow, in the time that we were gone, this route of was, had to have been picked up. And even then, if yeah. I drop it, it does yeah. that. Look, no it won't even slide. Look, it, wow. even it won't that. even do it. No. It literally would have had to have been pulled. been pulled. If you watch, it literally would have had to have been picked up and pulled downward right there. there and that's where it would have caught because the recorder would have caught against this lip on the right <laughs> and we're gonna pick it up still <laughs> now that <laughs> that is really crazy that is something we have no way of explaining how this diode slid across the cardboard surface and fell from this box other than classifying it as a paranormal occurrence when we played back the audio recorded by the diode you can hear it sliding, and you can hear the exact moment it falls. All right, so we're getting ready to start the investigation at St. Joseph's Hospital, and we are getting ready to head over to the main building. Jason, Dave, and Steve are gonna be going to the first floor, to the surgical suite in the ER, and then myself, Polly Gear, and Renee Lambert, we're gonna be going upstairs to the geriatric unit where we're getting a lot of activity and a lot of strange feelings. So hopefully the St. Joseph's Hospital is gonna speak to us tonight. Ready guys? Yeah, All right, good luck fellas. We're gonna head upstairs. Good luck. Thank you. You too. All right. One of the most intimidating things about investigating St. Joseph's Hospital is navigating this building. I mean, it's 100,000 square feet. What are we gonna do if we get lost? Here we are. It is pretty, pretty creepy up here. I'm gonna go ahead and roll on an audio recorder. Boom. If you're a nurse, can you grab a hold of that and make it hit the second light? Was that other camera rolling as it had already started going off? Or? Yeah. Okay. Make it hit two. Come on. You can do it. We just found the ER and we set up the REM pod. And already it looks like something's trying to touch the antenna. Use all the energy you can, all the energy around you. Oh. Was that behind the counter there? Uh-huh. It sounded like somebody hit their fist on the nurse's station. And what was even more weird is it was almost perfectly synced up with the REM pod.
Do I will. Was that behind the counter there? Mm -hmm. So where do you want to, you want to park it right here, you think? Or do you want to do it in a specific room? Well, let's walk by each room just to get a feel. Okay. And maybe we can decide. Yeah. When you walk up and down the hallways of this hospital, it feels like you have eyes staring at you from every direction. So the only question is, where do we begin? Is that curtain moving? Look at it, in the middle of it's moving on the bottom. A little swing. And we haven't been in there, haven't been by there, there's no way to... And there's no open windows up here either. Could you move that curtain for us, please? Could you give it a touch? Just smack it. If you smack that curtain, we'll come in and talk to you. If you smack that curtain, we'll come in and talk to you. If you smack that curtain, we'll come in and talk to you. If you smack that curtain, we'll come in and talk to you. You can tell us all about your family. Maybe you have some grandchildren you'd like to tell us about. Hear a voice down there. Down here? I thought I heard a voice down here. Coke. From every direction, it sounded like we could hear voices. And that makes sense, because there were so many people that died up here on this floor. Maybe they were trying to reach out to us. It's okay, grab a hold of it. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just saw a light anomaly go right past her. Yes. It looked like a light anomaly flew past the REM pod. As it went past the antenna, the device itself actually started alarming. It's okay, grab a hold of it. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's okay, grab a hold of it. Oh my god. Oh my god. This could quite possibly prove that these light anomalies do hold spirit energy. I really can't think of a better explanation than that. Dave's relocating camera. That's enough. Can you please stop? Can you back away from the device, please? Are you standing behind Renee? Alright, ending, ending, ending. Ah, 
Oh no. Well, the battery just got drained. Oh my gosh. I had two bars of battery left on this. And... It's yeah, drained. As I'm trying to review one of our burst EVP sessions, the batteries in the recorder are suddenly drained. Sometimes this can mean a spirit is drawing energy to make something happen. Can you tell us why you're in the hospital? Did you hear that in the hallway? Mm, yeah. It sounded like, almost like, I don't want to, it was like just movement, like just scratching. Scooting. Or, yeah, like, yeah, like a foot. Like, Almost like someone running their foot across the carpet out in the hallway there. Are you in the hallway? When I looked down this hallway, I got the worst feeling right there. Just stand right here and look towards the doorway for me. Isn't that strange? Remember this hallway right here was pretty creepy. Yes. This one? Right here. The hardest part is finding our way around this building. Getting to a specific place could take upwards of 30 minutes. We have to go where the activity takes us. You want to stay here for a minute? Yeah, this is People come through here thinking they don't have anyone to turn to. No one understands, you know what I mean? Come on, we can hear you down there. Come down here and talk to us. Come on, come closer to us here. Or make a sound, let us know where you are, we'll come to you. Or make a sound, let us know where you are, we'll come to you. Or make a sound, let us know where you are, we'll come to you. That's it, come on. What's most surprising is almost everywhere we go, it still sounds like people are walking around in this hospital. It really makes you wonder if this activity around us is from some of the many people who passed away here. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm.
You heard something over here? Mm -hmm. In here. What was it? Somebody in here? There we go again. That's the same one. Yep. Well, thank you. Could you, uh. Ooh, I got chills. Ooh. Yep, right up my back. Could you make a noise that was a little bit louder for us? A lot of times, you can sense when spirits are around you. Here at St. Joseph's Hospital, the energy can be overwhelming. It'll send a chill right up your spine. What are you looking at? Is it on the left down there? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's a bag, a trash bag. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. That was right over here in this room over here. Was right in that room. That was pretty loud too. Yeah, it was. Can I? on the left down there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who's it on the left down there? Whoa, 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 whoa. Who's it on the left down there? Whoa, 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 whoa. Something like that. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah. Did, did you kick this wooden desk here? I have no idea how we didn't hear it at the time, but after I asked if something kicked the desk, a disembodied voice answered me. Did you kick this wooden desk here? Where'd you go now? I was recording it. You were? Yeah. Good. That was, ooh, that was creepy. Where did it sound? It was right in here. We were getting ready to head over to the kitchen when I heard what sounded like a man laughing. Luckily, Jason still had his recorder running and we were able to capture it. You know? Do what? Do what? Do what? We can go through here. You creepy in here. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Good. It's 54 minutes, 55 minutes almost. I mean, technically, if you think about it, I mean, I mean, we're covering, for the size of the place, we're covering a pretty decent amount of it. I had a good break, I mean. Yeah, and we some great stuff. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. Not a bad feeling, but like, like a thousand eyes, yeah. if that makes sense. Just like an overwhelming amount of like. It's a lot of different rooms are all opened up so they can see, you know, there's no walls for them to, you know what I mean? It's just a very sur yeah. surreal feeling. I've never really felt anything like the energy that's in here right now. Well, it's, it's definitely obvious that we're not alone. Nah, I mean, that's yeah. for sure. I can tell you that right now. So, sure. Especially when we came through the threshold. Yeah. yeah. Right now, we're what? We're in the kitchen area, right? Toward in that area, but not cafeteria. Yet. Okay. So, do you guys want to? You guys want to head up to the ICU? Yeah. Up to you guys. Renee's back behind the nurse's station. She's trying to look for your prescription pad. Are you gonna let her do that?
Whoa, was that you? No. Did you hear that? I heard it right here. Yeah. I was over there. I heard it right here. Something just tap banged on this desk. That was loud. Whoa, was that you? Alright, were you mad that she was back there trying to get your prescription pad? Well, what if I go back there and I really look for it? Where is it? Is it in this office back here? What if I go in here? What if I look through your drawers? Was that you guys? No. No. Did you hear it? What? Uh uh. I thought I heard another tap. I didn't hear anything. It might have been back that way then. I didn't hear it. Is it in this cabinet over here? Can you stand right beside where you were before? Ooh, I got chills. Show me where you tapped on that desk. What's up, Jason? As soon as we came up the landing here, we walked out into the CCU. It just felt like a cold breeze came from that hallway and hit me right in the face. I mean, it almost felt like I was standing outside and wind blew. Oh, wow. Real cold air. There's definitely a, a vibe up here. Four minutes left on this. Let's go down here. Watch it run by. Okay. A little bit here. Yeah. Okay. That was me. I'm sorry. You all right, man? Yeah. Well, I'm just. I'm. I just. I'm feeling it. You know, it's yeah. tense up here. I'm. I'm feeling tense. It just. I can feel it. This is the ICU. Yeah. There's just so much heartache in here, man. thought I saw like half of a shadow back in here so I'm gonna look this way and I thought something just came right out to my like right beside my head oh it's still here hello you run on I don't run on audio too now. who's up here with us Dave Jason me I see you St. Joseph I'm really really sorry that this was the last place that you had to be before you passed away. I'm very sorry about that. I just saw something right here beside me. Yeah. Um, moving? Yeah. Okay. But at least you were in good hands up here. You were being well taken care of. It's me, Brittany. I'm sorry. I'm really, like, freaking crying right now, man. Okay, man. <laughs> yeah. There's just so much heartache up here, man. Like, I'm literally, I can, I'm, literally, I'm literally crying right now. There's a lot of energy up here. Yeah, I'm gonna set this down. 
being there in the ICU where thousands of people had taken their last breath and just and just knowing all the sadness it definitely it definitely spoke to me and it was kind of overwhelming don't be afraid to let us know where you are Whoever that was, I felt that. I felt you come close to me. You're really impacting Steve here. That's good that you're letting us know you're here. Oh my god. <laughs> Battery's getting ready to die. We're hoping to get down here to where the delivery room is, the surgical suite, which you can see right here behind me. This is where they would wash up and prepare for surgery and delivery. And then in here, which it's very warm in here, got these. It's hard to tell how many babies were born up here in this room, but maybe this familiar sound will trigger some activity. There's a baby born in here. Who wants to come see it? Please come down here closer to us. You can come into this room. Can you tell us your name? You heard that right? Yeah. You heard that, right? Yeah. Feels pretty dead to me in here. It does. Yeah. Stop this. We're gonna lose that camera in a second. I mean, normally I can get a face or I can get a, a at least a gender. You know what I mean? And I don't know what that was that hit me. I turned around and it just went right in the side of my head and I just, it, as soon as it hit, it just tears again, like literally started falling out of my eyes. It was, it was right. thick over there. Yeah. It was, there was definitely, uh, yeah, I feel you, man. It, I mean, it was. That's, <laughs> I have not cried in years. That? In years. That was, it's pretty, pretty intense up here. <laughs> Our camera battery died and we can't continue investigating until we get a new one. But Polly, Renee, and I are locked out of base camp and the guys have the keys. So I'm gonna have to call them on the radio to find out where they are. Yeah. Oh. Think of what we've had happen so far. Yeah, man. One more minute. Yeah. Yeah. Understand right where that happened. Where you came up to me. I'm gonna head on out of here. Oh, oh God. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> what do you say? I don't know. Something about activity. Uh, repeat. I said we're all done and waiting down here in the lobby. Just wanted to see if you guys were getting any activity. <laughs> well, uh, we've had a couple things happen uh, right now, but we've been up in the ICU, and when you radioed us, it was an intense it made moment. Three of us literally jump about four feet, so we're kind of hyperventilating now, and trying to recover. Um, but we'll be down shortly. We're on our way. Game on, Gucci 
sir. We uh, we just have no other choice but to sit here and wait for you because our camera battery died. Oh, so sorry to put you out. Back. Sorry to put you out, Ryan. We're on our way. Oh, I'm sorry, and we're sorry. I'm not. Thank you, sir. We can get left, can't we? A lot of the equipment needs to recharge before we can move on as a group. So to give these batteries some time, I'm gonna go to the critical care unit, alone. So, this is, uh, could be pretty creepy. I'm hoping, they said they had some good activity in the ICU. Well, right around the corner is the CCU, and uh, we wanna make sure we hit that as well. And uh, it's an area that I felt like I was kinda drawn to, so. We'll see what happens when I'm by myself. Okay. As Ryan is alone upstairs in the CCU, I'm on the first floor making my way to surgical. All right. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I feel a lot better. Right here. Um, first of all, my name is Steve. I am from West Virginia. And I understand this is the uh, surgery, um, surgery area. Um, what I think I'm just going to do right now is stand here and Try not to say too much, and uh, let you do your thing. If you want to communicate with me, that is, that's fine. Um, okay. Um, but I'll be here for a, a short while. I'll put the camera, say right about here. I'm gonna get a shot of the nurse's station here. Put the REM pod. Right there. Which I'm pretty sure is in view. It is. REM pod right there. Alright. You're gonna start by going dark. EVP session, CCU, Ryan Sola, putting the digital recorder right by the round pod. There definitely is some confusion and some heartache here. My friends, uh, my friends and I, just want to, want to assure you uh, that we are good people. good hearts and we have nothing but compassion for the people who worked here and the people who were tended to here. Um, I'm not from the area. I said that earlier, I'm not from the area. I don't know any of you, but I want you to know I personally um, want you to know that if you you did suffer here, and heaven forbid if, if this was your your last your last area here, you know, here on the, on earth. As as I you know as we know it, I want you to know that you uh, you have my deepest deepest sympathies. And my deepest, deepest respect. If there's any patients that need help up here, could you slam a door? Or move something? Or scream out? All you 
you have to do is let me know where you are, and I will come and find you. I am the only person on this side of the hospital. Everybody else is all the way on the other side. I'm the only person here that can help you. Please talk to me. I, I want to help you. Ooh, I just had to chill. Standing in almost complete darkness, alone in this hospital is chilling in itself. It leaves you open to experience the energies that were left behind by the deaths of thousands of people. I just heard a footstep over there. Is that you? You can use my energy. You can touch me. You can do whatever you want. Just please come over here and talk to me. I want to show people that you're up here and that you need help or that you want to talk, whatever the case may be. feels like there's a, a constant flow of energy of just nurses and doctors going back and forth from room to room, station to room, vice versa. I feel, I don't know if we recorded it, but I definitely feel that there was a, a younger nurse here. And just younger nurse, but she, she's worn down by the by the trauma by the the sadness here but i want you to know I'm not sure what your name is maybe you maybe you left it here may hopefully you're a very noble person all of you nurses and doctors very noble noble people Somebody come down the hallway for me. If you're down here, I need you to come this way towards me. Walk past the nurse's station. If you can do that, maybe I'll play some cards with you. Bring some playing cards up here. happen there. We're going to go ahead and see if we can. Use the PSB-11. The PSB-11 spirit box sweeps through frequencies and it's believed that spirits can use this white noise background to speak. <laughs> Could you please come talk to me? I'll even let it sit there, and you can walk up to it on your own. If you have anything to say, feel free to please speak in this device right here in my hand. It's an orange light on it. There's a good chance that 
It'll record your voice. Can you give us maybe your name? First and or last. Or maybe why you were here. What the f was that? I just saw a f anomaly go right into this room with my eyes. Holy sh! Was that you going into that room? I was trying to see where the REM pod was on the frame, and it just went right across the frame, man. I mean, right across. That was f insane. Can you speak through that box, please? My name's Ryan, what is your name? You can come out into the hallway. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm gonna stand right here beside the box. Do you know what year it is? As I'm standing beside the spirit box, a light anomaly flies across the hallway and disappears directly into my midsection. And as soon as it passes through me, I look down. Then over the next few minutes, my whole demeanor changes drastically. Hello? Anybody? You know, I actually am a little lost and need your help. Not physically. But a little mentally, emotionally. Starting to wonder what the purpose of life is. Starting to think that everything that I uh, thought was worthwhile is just a waste of my time, to be frank. That's not something I'm just saying to get you to come out and respond to me. That's, that's serious talk. anyone and everyone who maybe shared their story, their name with me, or are still in their own way working their working their jobs. And to those of you who are here for you know for the reason of being injured or, or whatnot. 
Peace be with you all. Peace be with all of you. Patients, nurses, doctors. Anyone and everyone. Anything to like except for disappointment? That comes from me to you asking someone who has lived your life entirely all the way through is there anything to this life but disappointment? At this point, I can't continue this investigation. I don't know if something's affecting me, but it's pulling out a lot of resentment that I think I've internalized for a long time. I think I just need to pack up and let them finish this investigation without me. They didn't want to talk, if they're even here. If they even exist. So, I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and end this solo mission and we'll see where we go from here. I don't know. Yeah, that's for certain, Dave. Dave decided to stay with Ryan at base camp to make sure he's okay. Steve, Polly, Renee, and I are going to try and hit the ICU one last time. Before we left the ICU, we wanted to give these spirits one more chance to make communication. EVP session, uh, Jason, Polly, uh, Renee, myself in the ICU, and uh, we're going to be uh, making our way out of here and not sure if or when we'll ever be able to come back in here and visit you guys. I especially kind of want to uh, address whomever uh, it was that impacted me like you did uh, the, with that that raw emotion. And uh, this might be one last time uh, that I get a chance to do this, but if you would, could you please leave me at least a first name or maybe your last name or anything else you'd like to say right here close to this, devi uh, this device. Now's, now's the time. Thirty seconds. Ten. 
10 seconds, and we're going to have to head on out. Is that one of you guys? I heard this male voice over my headphones as it was captured, and it is definitely a male voice. Definitely. We appreciate your time. And uh, again, if we don't get a chance to come back, you know, uh, we hope that you uh, are or will be uh, finding uh, finding your peace. Whether you uh, you work here or if uh, you know if uh, your time on Earth uh, you know, ended here, so we have nothing but love and respect for you all. So. You all take care. The spirits of St. Joseph's Hospital definitely left everything on the table tonight. They spoke to us. They affected us. It's me breathing hard, sorry. I'm really like, freaking crying right now, man. Is there anything to like except for disappointment? They shocked us. That was me, I'm sorry. You all right, man? Yeah, well, I'm just, I'm, I, it's, I'm feeling it. You know, it's yeah. tense up here. I'm, I'm feeling tense. It just, I can feel it. Okay. We were picking up abandonment stuff, and we walked up here, and the routive is literally thrown off of where Jason had it set up. The thousands of people who lost their lives in this now abandoned building seem to reach out to the living, begging for their story to be heard.